So hey, presto, another short. Uh, yeah, another short that is definitely a major influence from Looney Tunes, and it's very funny. It's definitely one of the most entertaining Pixar shorts that we've seen this month. You know what? Like, I would look at this and think, what would Tex Avery think today if he was still alive and he saw this? Like, uh, I'm, I th- I'm pretty sure he would liked it. Oh, yeah, he would have loved it. I mean, it's kind of like a similar situation in which when, uh, you know, Chuck Jones was able to see, I think, the genie in Aladdin, and he really approved of it. Yeah. But I said, like, oh, well, Warner Brothers did this for me. He's like, ah, oh, sorry, it's Disney. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, so um, the idea of this one is, is that uh, it's uh, a magician trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat, you know, stereotypical uh, kind of like, you know, magician stuff. And so he's doing, he's in front of this like massive crowd, but uh, he keeps, uh, obviously, you know, you know um, the rabbit is more interested in getting his carrots, uh, which uh, he's been owed. But uh, the magician decides just to go on without that. So uh, he ends up uh, doing some tricks by accident, which uh, obviously end up with him either hurting himself or obviously embarrassing himself. So uh, that's uh, the whole th- thing plays out. And uh, it eventually gets to the point where, um, you know, a, a trick happens and uh, he decides to... But then the whole crowd has loved the whole routine that uh, he's been uh, a part of his old shenanigans. So he decides to reward the rabbit anyway with his carrot. So uh, it's uh, basically it was uh, accident, all accident, an accidental uh, stardom <laughs> uh, story, <laughs> to say the least. You know. Yeah, it's very akin to like, uh, you know, those Bug, Bugs Bunny cartoons when, you know, he's at the opera and he's constantly tormenting the singer by singing really loud or really softly and just, you know, driving him to the point of insanity or when he's playing the piano and then there's a mouse there that is constantly bugging him so yeah it's very akin to those kind of old uh, looney tunes cartoons yeah and uh, you know the one thing i do like about it is the pacing like because you know like you can definitely get that pacing like you know when you saw uh, you know like uh, you know in the droopy cartoons when like you know you we just uh, you see how um you know like it's uh, it, it's it's so um quick and so reactionary uh, in the style, and then all of a sudden it just kind of like slows down for like bits, so people can just catch up with the laughter. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, it, it has that stop start kind of like a uh, really like a jerky kind of like a uh, feel to it, which I really, which I really loved in those cartoons growing up. So yeah, yeah it was. Uh, but the nice thing about this is that uh, the one thing we did definitely did point out about it was the lighting in this. Like you know, it's just I love how everything is like so um, you know uh, anointed with light. And uh, how, uh, you know, everything kind of like is shown how important things are through, you know, how light some things are and how dark some things are. And then there's also the spotlights around there as well. And like uh, how well lit the uh, the auditorium is as well. Like it's all focused on the stage. And uh, but also you can kind of like appreciate that it's also in like in a big uh, atmosphere as well. So it's uh, yeah, I really love the lighting in this. That was basically one of my favorite parts in it. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, uh, once again, going into uh, what we were saying about Knickknack, in which that short was definitely akin to something like you would see in a Looney Tunes short, in which it focuses on a lot of gags and a lot of hijinks. But I think with Presto, it's definitely taking all the experience that Pixar has been doing at that point, uh, almost 10 years, and basically just perfecting it. It's like they were able to take the core of what made knickknacks work and then put it all together with Presto, and it just works so incredibly well. It does, doesn't it? Like, uh, it, I, I, mean, I, I couldn't think of a, a moment where it just wasn't dull. Like, uh, And uh, I just love how lively it all is. You know, like, yeah, uh, and and this is a perfect short to pair up with Wally because Wally is very quiet and subdued, and also it you you kind of like drink in the atmosphere with the destroyed Earth and outer space, and then you have something like Presto in which is bright, it's colorful, it's quick, it's humorous, so. It kind of like fits in. It's like, you know, you're going to get that and then you're going to get something a little bit more subdued in the end with Wally. So I think it turned pretty well for them. Yeah, well, it complements uh, Wally very well. And I'm sure we talked about this already in Pix Mix. But uh, um, the fact that it gives you this whole um, uh, readiness for like, hey, this is not a vocal narrative. This is a physical narrative. This is going to tell you the story all in physical form. And so I think that's what um, I think they get right in this. I think they're, they're pairing up uh, Presto with Wally because uh, in both instances you're not going on the narrative of basically what's being told to you, except for the times when obviously the you know, the narrate you know, obviously the uh, 
the narrator has to come in to kind of like tell certain bits of the parts of the story and everything like that, and also towards the further like the the final like the but apart into the second act, finally into the final third, obviously then it's uh, more um, you know uh, more character driven. But uh, in um, the, the going into Presto and then uh, it complements very well going into Wally as you know obviously it's the free to presentation and there's being welcome to it. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know what? Um, I would say that we definitely think that this is def one of the best Pixar shorts that we've seen. And I think that it's probably right up there as like one of the top, what would you say, maybe top five at least? Um, I think um, it definitely is up there. I would definitely say it's one of my top three. I think. Like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think you know we actually haven't talked about this yet. Actually, I mean, shall we go back uh, once we've done all the twenty-five and uh, maybe say which ones are favorites and which ones aren't? And uh, yeah, I think so we could do that. Maybe we can do our five favorite and our five least favorite. Okay, after Christmas. So after okay. Christmas. Yeah. Well, that's what you all got to look forward to. So uh, yeah, we'll meet you in the next one. All right. See ya. <laughs>